Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the word, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. Not today. You know, I don't think the railroad cares enough about kids having fun. Boy, old Billy and Caesar can play his nose. Hey, I got an idea. Is this everything, Stacy? Great, yes. Oh boy, a train for Snowyville is here. Let's go. genius of an old noggin of yours. That bucket of bolts of a jukebox has been getting the best of schemer for years. But now, I'm gonna put that slug in that hunk of junk and get a free song. Schemer's calling us names. He's trying to cheat us. Free song, here I come. Cha-cha-cha-cha-cha. <laughs> If he wants us to play, he's got to show us a little respect. Yeah, baby. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Respect. Till then, this jukebox is closed for repair. Here we go. Yeah. 
Not really. Just doing some spring cleaning to put the spring back into my signal house. I never knew you had so many things in there. Well, one thing leads to another thing, and then that thing is joined to this thing, and before you know it, you're attached to too many things. Say, I thought Shining Time Station was closed today. What are you doing here? Well, we hid so we could stay here this afternoon. Yeah, there's no real reason for us to go. No matter what Billy and Stacy say. Well, they might have a good reason for sending you home. What good reason? Sometimes good reasons just appear, like after-dinner mints. Or to put it another way, sometimes rearranging the way things are meant to be leads to trouble. Nah. Mavis knows exactly what I mean. Who's Mavis? I'll tell you. Mavis is a diesel engine who works for the quarry company shunting freight cars in their sidings. She has six small wheels hidden by side plates just like Toby's. Mavis is young and full of her own ideas. She loves rearranging things too and began putting Toby's cars in different places every day. This made Toby cross. Freight cars, he grumbled, should be where you want them, when you want them. Fiddlesticks, said Mavis, and flounced away. At last, Toby lost patience. I can't waste time playing hunt the cars with you. Take them yourself. Mavis was pleased. Taking cars made her feel important. At the station, Diesel oiled up to her. Toby's an old fusspot, she complained. Diesel sensed trouble and was delighted. Toby says only steam engines can manage freight cars, continued Mavis. How absurd, squirmed Diesel. Depend upon it, Mavis. Anything steam engines can do, we Diesels can do better. Diesel knew nothing about cars, but Mavis didn't realize this. Toby's line crosses the main road behind the station and for a short way follows a farm lane. Frosty weather makes the muddy lane rock hard and very slippery. Toby stops before reaching the lane. His fireman halts the traffic at the crossing, and then he sets off again. By using the heavy cars to push him along, he has no trouble with the frosty rails in the lane and across the road. It is the only safe thing to do in this kind of weather. Toby warned Mavis and told her just what to do. I can manage, thank you, she replied. I'm not an old fusspot like you. The freight cars were tired of being pushed around by Mavis. It's slippery, they whispered. Let's push her around instead. On, 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 they yelled. Mavis took no notice. Instead, she brought the cars carefully down the lane and stopped at the level crossing. All traffic halted. One in the headlamp for Fusspot Toby, chortled Mavis. But Mavis had stopped in the wrong place. Instead of taking Toby's advice, she had given the cars the chance they wanted. Hold back! Hold back! they cried. Grrr! Up! ordered Mavis. The cars just laughed and her wheels spun helplessly. Workmen sanded the rails and tried to dig away the frozen mud, but it was no good. Everyone was impatient. Grrr! wailed Mavis. Toby was in the yard when he heard the news. I warned her, he fumed. She's young yet, soothed his driver. And she can manage her cars herself, interrupted Toby. They're your cars, really, his driver replied. Mavis is supposed to stay at the quarry. If Sir Topham Hatt finds out... Hmm, yes, said Toby thoughtfully. He and his driver agreed that it would be best to help Mavis after all. An angry farmer was telling Mavis just what she could do with her train. Having trouble, Mavis, chortled Toby. I am surprised. Grrrrush, said Mavis. With much puffing and wheel slip, Toby pushed Mavis and the freight cars back. The hard work made his fire burn fiercely, and his firemen spread hot cinders to melt the frozen mud. Goodbye.
Bye, called Toby. You'll manage now, I expect. Mavis didn't answer. She took the cars to the sheds and scuttled home to the quarry as quickly as she could. So you see, sometimes there's value in what you're told by someone who's just a little old, someone who's wise and sage by virtue of age. Excuse me, kids, but well, I'm here to fix a hurting jukebox. Hey, it's about time you arrived, pal. We'll see will be the problem. Well, uh, the problem is it doesn't work. Listen, there's a possibility that this one might be haunted. You have a suspicious mind, sir. I'm sure it's not that. It's probably just all shook up. Yeah, well, anyway, uh, listen, the clock's ticking, so let's get to work, pal, huh? Trust me, I won't tell. But you better get back to work now. It's all done. Great. So that, uh, I mean, it's fixed. Well, no matter of speaking, sir. Here. Well, someone put a slug in the machine. What? <laughs> you think it could have been me? Don't be ridiculous. I mean. <laughs> Why would I put a slug in my own jukebox? Ju I mean, unless, of course, I found a slug in another machine by accident. No, sir. But I can give you a little piece of advice. She's a beautiful jukebox, sir. Well, maybe all she needs to work is a little respect. You know, you really remind me of somebody. Anyways, uh, so, so the machine's fixed? Well, well, sir, I feel I might be up to the machine. But just remember now. Don't be cruel. Here's your bill. It's a pretty mean pair of blue suede shoes. Oh, uh, thanks. My mommy bought them for me. I'll meet a pair like that someday. 